So, what kind of modules are there on CPAN? Let's see a couple of them, just to have some thoughts. There are more than 20,000, so just a couple of examples. Let's start with FileSlur, which, which provides you a simple function to read in a file without you need to open it, or a simple function to write to a file, just give it a file name and the content and to write it out. It can save a couple of lines of code. Then there are other strings, more uh, bigger ones, for example DBI. DBI allows is, a, is the database independent interface of Perl. It allows you to connect basically to any relational database around the world. So you need DBI and then DBI will interact with the specific database driver which is in DBD something and then there are for example dbd oracle or dbd mysql or dbd postgres sql which is pg or dbd sql lite interfacing with sql lite database and so on there's even a dbd OBD odbc so if you have an odbc enabled system you can use the dbd odbc and then the odbc driver will connect to the right database already and then if you want to deal with uh, excel uh, excel files spreadsheets you can use the spreadsheet to read and spreadsheet write. Actually, these can deal deal with any kind of spreadsheet. So it can deal with uh, Microsoft Office, the Excel. It can be uh, deal with the Calc. I think it's called of Open Office. It can deal with uh, CSV files that are just tables. So these are the spreadsheet read and the spreadsheet write modules. And then there are m further spreadsheet related modules, and they are not operating system specific so these can read and write Microsoft Excel files when running on Linux or Unix and I've been working on projects where I had to process an Excel file an Excel file with, uh, uploaded by a client and I was to process it and it was running on a Unix system and then after the process I had to generate a new Excel file so I was using these modules XML Twig and then there are a couple of other XML related modules that allow you to parse an XML file, fetch data from it or change some parts of an XML file or create a, a new XML. But these are generic XML parsers and X XML tools. There are certain XML uh, files that are much smaller, much more well defined and they have a much uh, there have own specifics, for example, RSS and Atom feeds. So these are the feeds that when you're reading news, then you can get um, what are the latest news uh, links. And uh, these are just XML files, but they have very, very well-defined format. So not just like any generic XML file. And so when you're dealing with them, you don't want to use a full-fledged XML generator or parser or whatever there are specific modules for creating rss feed or atom feed and so on then lwp lwp is the low level module of accessing of creating a web client basically so if you want to interact with web web servers if you want to interact with pages on websites then lwp is the sort of the low level way to interact with them fetch a new page or, or do something. But LWP mostly knows about HTTP. And you would like maybe to deal with something more high level, like forms and links and care about only these. So for that, there is WW Mechanize, which is a higher level tool. So it's using LWP by itself. It's a higher level tool that can you can provide it, you can tell it to go to some web page, fill in a form, uh, press the submit, check what's in there, what the result, and so on. So it can provide you a full interaction with the uh, website. Then NetTelnet. NetTelnet is just a Telnet client, so you don't need any specific Telnet client. I've been using this running on Windows and Telneting to various devices that had Telnet interface. They were not secure, but that's how they were. And then I could Telnet to them and give various commands through this uh, module while my script is running on a Windows machine. Template Toolkit 
is um, another module that provide allows you to to ha have a template and then fill out the template when you it's very much used when you're generating web pages or when you're ge generating reports that you have the layout a template and then just you have to fill out certain fields when when you build web applications there are a couple of environments for that in Perl, a couple of systems. One of them is Catalyst, which is, which is a heavyweight system, big one, you need for huge applications. And then, for example, there is Dancer, which is a lightweight web framework in Perl. That's for people who want to build web applications. If you want to build a desktop application for Windows or Linux or Mac or all three of them, then you can use other a couple of systems. I have been using GTK2 quite a lot, but recently I moved and I've been using WX, which is WX widgets basically. The uh, advantage of WX that I see is that it looks native both on Windows and on GNOME based Linux systems. So these are two frameworks again that modules that live on CPAN that allow you to build platform independent desktop applications. So applications write in WX or GTK2 will run on Windows and will run on Linux and will run on Macintosh. And probably also on Unix systems though I haven't uh, used them much. Then you might want to create a binary version of your code so you don't want uh, your users to need to install Perl. For that there is par and par create that will allow you to package all your script and all your modules and all the dependencies and everything you need into one single executable that will be can be easily distributed and then run on any system. Obviously what it creates that's platform dependent. So par will create you an exe for Windows and can create you an appropriate file for Linux and so on. But when, what if you want to interact with various web services? For example, with YouTube. What if you would like to fetch information from YouTube? There is an API on YouTube to do that, and there is a Perl module on CPAN, this one, that will allow you to interact with that API and then just use regular Perl functions to fetch data from YouTube. If you don't like YouTube, you would like prefer to get information from IMDB about movies from Hollywood, then go ahead. You have a module called IMDB Film, and that allows you to interact with the IMDB website. And if you are biological inclined, then you might want to learn about the BioUtil DNA, which is working, doing something with DNAs, and the whole BioPerl framework that that's very heavyweight and it's uh, used by biologists a lot. So these are just a couple of examples for uh, modules on CPAN and then you can find a lot more using the various search engines.